Hi, this is Nancy Ralphsimo with On Point TV, and I want to do a little quick live video for you today. So as you know, I'm a quilt maker, and I have a lot of videos on our YouTube channel on how to make quilts, everything from the Learning to Quilt series, and Lone Stars, and New York Beauties, and Double Wedding Rings, and Rail Fences. So a lot of information there on quilting. But one of the steps of quilting that I think that I'm really bad at, if you ever ask me what part of quilting I like best, I love it all. I don't know that there's any part of quilting that I don't thoroughly enjoy. But there is one step of quilting that I thoroughly forget more times than not. And being as I'm somebody that's trying to be a kind of well-rounded quilter, and I'm trying to start collecting some antique or vintage quilts, this step, when I miss it, can be really, really bad for the future of quilting. And it's a label. I know that sounds silly, but it's a label. I forget or get too lazy or in too much of a rush most of the time, and I don't do labels the way that I should. I want to show you some labels that are done, but the reason I want to show you labels today is not just how I do labels, but it's a new technique that I have, not that I have, but it's come out with some new tools. Let's go with that. And it's using my brother's scan and cut. So this is a scan and cut machine. And in the past, I've showed you how to cut fabric for quilt projects using your scan and cut. I've also used my Big Shot and my Gemini and other tools like that. But today we're going to use the, the scan and cut to draw the labels using these pens. Now, if you are a paper crafter, the name We Are Memory Keepers is something that absolutely is in your vocabulary. If you're a paper crafter and you don't own something from We Are Memory Keepers, you're probably one in a million people that don't own something from We Are Memory Keepers. They come out with really, really cool crafting tools, not just for paper crafters, but a lot of different pa crafting tools. And I've been working with them for a long time and I absolutely love their tools. I also love my scan and cut. And when I found out that there was a way that I could use my scan and cut with the We Are Memory Keeper fabric pens, right away my mind went to labels. I could do some cool labels. So know that these are, the company actually is American Crafts, the brand is We Are Memory Keepers. You should be able to find these lots of different places, but if you have any trouble finding anything that I talk about, just let me know. I can find a source for you, okay? So these are the pens, they're fabric marking pens, and they're really nice. I have tested them out, I have washed with them, and they're not gonna fade, they're not gonna bleed, they're really top-notch pens, or markers, I should say. This one happens to be a 30-piece color set with, honestly, a lot of really, really fun colors, and that just is fun for me. But it does come in with some smaller sets, and I'm going to show you some other things that you need for that also. But I want to show you why I'm doing this. So my brother is getting married to a beautiful lady whose name is Alicia, and I'm super, super excited, and I'm really over the moon excited because that means that I get to get a brand new nephew. So she has a six year old son, his name is Nolan, and I, the wedding's now for a couple of months, and it's okay that I'm telling you this because Alicia is not a quilter yet. So I will try my best to get Alicia to be a quilter because she's a nurse and nurses love quilting. I don't, you out there, I'll bet you half of you are nurses. Something about nurses, doctors, and teachers, they love quilting. So when I first met Alicia, what she was telling me about her son is that he loves the Transformers. Well, we're, don't tell, but we're, my sister is working on a quilt for my brother and his new wife, and so I thought I'd work on a quilt for Nolan. And so I just happened in my stash because my son is also an obsessive Yes, he's 33, but he's obsessed with the Transformers also. So I'm making him this cute little quilt with the Transformers, and I need to make a label, all right? So before I show you how I'm going to make the label, I want to show you some examples of labels. So this is one that my friend Laura did, and what she did is she used her computer and then printed this with the fonts on her computer, just printed it like as if it was um, onto paper, but it's onto fabric. These are fabric sheets. I think June Taylor makes some, Timeless Treasure makes some. 
um, electric quilt makes some. So it is a specially treated fabric that will accept the ink from your inkjet, or I think just inkjet, not laser printers, possibly, I'm not sure. But she printed that and then sewed it around onto the quilt. That is a perfect label because it has everything. It is made by Laura. When it was made, it was made for me. And then in this case, because she used the techniques from somebody's book, she actually wrote down the name of that book so that future generations would know where this design came from, all right? The next one is more typical Nancy. I take a fabric marking pen and I just write on the back of the quilt, Nancy M. Rolfsema and the date because I am a lazy labeler. I'm hoping with these new marking pens, I won't be such a lazy labeler. Now, what I like to do is this. So I'm gonna show you this technique where you put a, the fabric is done, it's a half, triangle of a um, fabric and actually I've done this on a video already if you go back to the learning to quilt series but here I've got my name the year the name of the quilt and where I live in my big sloppy writing because that's how I write I've got really lousy handwriting so that is what a label needs to have the maker the year the name of the quilt and where it was made this one I wasn't too lazy, at least I put the label on. I just haven't written on it yet. I'll work on that later. And then there's the idea of art quilts. So when you're making a bed quilt, tradition, I guess, because that's all it is, you can break these rules if you want to, says that you put a label on the back of the quilt. Now I have, there was a gal in my quilt guild, she made the most elaborate labels. They were always fancy. She was a phenomenal, her name was already phenomenal hand applicator, tiny teeny things and, and embroidery. And she would embroider the names and put these elaborate, sometimes she'd do an entire story on the label. She, that's what she was known for. Everybody loved to flip Artie's quilts over and see all that information she would put on the labels. That's just not me. It's the back of the quilt. It just isn't that exciting to me. But Traditionally, you put a label on the back of the quilt. But what about an art quilt? Keep in mind, I believe that every quilt, beginning to end, is a piece of art. But there are quilts that people like to consider more art quilt. They're not traditional. They're usually going to be different techniques. So when it's something like that, do painters put their signature on the backs of their paintings? They do not they sign the fronts of their paintings or they initial the fronts of their paintings. This is an art quilt that I've made. I'll open it up a little bit. This is using the fabrics that I um, paint using the mono printing. And if you wanna know how to do that, of course, there's some videos on that. And then this is done with it, what, in what is called improv piecing, which is a new set of classes that I'm putting together. We haven't done videos yet, but we will. I am not, at this point, going to sign the front corner of this quilt because I intend to show it. And when you're showing quilts, they must, if it's going to be a judged quilt, they must cover the name of the maker or else the judge would know. And, you know, probably a judge isn't going to know who I am, but you never know. So I'm not going to sign it right now. I will put something temporary on the back for when I do enter it in the show. But when I'm done showing this quilt, I intend to sign my signature on the bottom corner of it. And I, my intention is to go right along the edge here. So this is in the bottom right hand corner. And I'm going to write cursive write my name because for me, this is more of that art quilt. So those are some ideas on, on labels. Why you would, why you don't. You know, you want to label them so that for years to come, people will know who made that quilt, when that quilt was made. I always, I'm always shocked when I look and go, 2013, I made that quilt seven years ago? It seriously feels like yesterday, but it's really nice to have. I wish that some of those antique and vintage quilts I had, the people had taken time to put labels on them. Maybe they were label lazy like I am. What I want to show you now is how this labeling works with my scan and cut and the fabric quill pens from We Are Memory Keepers. The first thing you want to do 
is take your fabric and stiffen up that fabric. So I've got a couple of different ways of doing that. This one, and let me, let me see if you can hear this. Doesn't that sound like paper? You really want the fabric to be very, very stiff. This was done with a product called Tyriel Magic. Tyriel Magic is a fabric that just makes it very, very stiff. It's like using, and I'll show you in a second, it's like using Mary Ellen's Best Press five times. All right, one shot, it's that stiff. But for me, it's not my favorite, and I can't quite figure out how to not get the iron to stick to it. So they say that you're supposed to get it all wet, lay it out, let it air dry, then come back and iron it. I'm sorry, I'm on my next project by then. I've just got too many things to do. But if you're a patient person, this is probably the best way to get your fabric really stiff. So again, it's Tyriel Magic. It's a fabric stabilizer, and it's really, really cool stuff. And there's a gazillion things you can do with it. Where I first learned about it was where they did it, and they fold it, and they actually made like origami baskets with it. Because look at how it keeps that crease just by finger pressing it, all right? So the next way would be with your Mary Ellen's Best Press. So this is a um, spray starch, I'm um, sorry, spray sizing that I really like. I love how it works on all of my quilts. My iron doesn't stick to it, which that one's important to me. And so the piece that I have on here, I've done that with. It's stiff, but not as stiff as the Tyriel Magic. I did three layers of Mary Ellen's on here to get this stiff enough. And then uh, be, to make sure that it sticks down to my mat, I like to use a little bit of 505 and I'll spray it on the back of my fabric. And then the fabric sticks down really, really nice. And I only say that because my mats have been used up pretty good. When a new, brand new mat, no problem. It'll stick down perfectly, no problem. But the more that you use a mat, if you've ever used an electronic cutting machine like this, you know that the mats are gonna, they wear out over time. So using the 505 for me works. Keep in mind, I think the instructions say, don't do that, wash it off, blah, blah, blah. But I, I'm breaking the rules. There you go, I'm a rule breaker. So I'm gonna move this forward. Oops, we gotta turn this back on. There's a couple of other tools that I wanna show you also as I bring this forward. And these are, these kind, they're these little discs. And in these little discs have a lot of pictures and words. So I don't know if Athena can get quite close enough, but on this little disc, I am using, there's a robot in here. I can't find him right now because there's so many, but like, look at this little kitty cat, or there's some, some different words. These little flip-flops are really cute. So if you're wanting to use the markers and really be creative, these little discs can be, there's just a lot of good stuff. So this one has a lot of different writing in it. And this one, and again, these are from We Are Memory Keepers. This one has different words, and then there's some leaves I'm gonna use on this. And these can be used on any of the electronic cutting machines. So like a Silhouette or a, you know what? I don't know if it can be used on a Cricut. I'm, I'm assuming it can be used on a Cricut, but I know it can be used on a Silhouette. I know it can be used on the Brother Scanica. Um, this, I don't have a silhouette or a cricket, so I'm just telling you what I know using that. And then to use these pens, I bought the quill pen holders. Now, this is the B pen holder, and that's what my uses in my scan and cut. But there are all four of them, so depending on what electronic machine you have, you can purchase the pen holder that will hold the quill pens, okay? Let's get these out of the way and let me take this forward so you can see my design. All right. I think you can see it get a little bit closer. There you go. So I created this design using some of the internal um, designs that are in my scan and cut already. And then some of them like the robot and the leaves from those little discs. And trust me, if I wanted to, I could have gone to town, but I'm still pretty simple when it comes to labels. So I did a test first. So this was kind of my tester, all right? And I needed to be on the diagonal because I'm going to fold this in half like I showed you that I do my other labels with. So do a little tester first and I just wanna take you through the motions. We're gonna draw that robot. 
So here is the design. And what I need to do is change this design because I don't want it to write Aunt Nancy and Uncle Bill anymore. I don't want it to write Welcome to the Family Nolan. I just want it to draw now the robot. So I'm going to say OK and I'm going to edit and I'm going to get rid of some of these extra pieces. So I got rid of the decorative leaves. I got rid of the 2020. I'm getting rid of um, the names and not the robot but over here, and I'm gonna get rid of that too, all right? So just in case, I am gonna save that. So now I'm gonna save it up here to inside the machine. I can save it to a um, little drive thing if I want to, and I'm gonna make this one new. I don't wanna lose that whole other design because there's other parts of it that I still need to use, okay? So it's gonna save. Okay, here's my little robot. I'm gonna draw that with a blue pen and I'm gonna take my, oh my goodness. Athena, there it is, shoo buddy. All right, I'm gonna take off my cap. I'm gonna put it into the pen holder, the adapter that makes these pens work with my scan and cut. Tuck it down inside there and clamp it in. Now, I could edit this. There's nothing that I need to do, but if I had wanted to, I'd already done it actually. I'll show you how I had when I first got him, he was straight up and down. But using my scan and cut, I was able to tip him on the angle just like I wanted him. I'm hoping he's still in the position that I wanted him. I can change the size of him. Um, I could make him bigger. I could make him smaller. A lot of different things that you can do with the edit features. This is not a how-to. I just want to show you that these are tools that you can do to do some cool things. So there's my little robot, and I am just going to draw the outside of him. I don't want any fill on the robot. I just want to draw the outside. So now I'm going to select, and I'm going to select draw. There is a little cursor. I can use this instead of my thumbnail. And then there is the toolbox. Now within the toolbox, you can do the speed that you're drawing. So if I'm drawing on paper, I go much, much faster. If I'm drawing on paper, I don't put as much draw pressure down. But because I'm drawing on fabric, I need the marker to take its time and really, really fit or touch that fabric so that it's um, going to be, you know, marking really nicely, I guess that's easy enough to say, right? And so I could do a test. I'm not much of a tester, but I could, but instead I'm just going to start. So Athena needs to lift up there a little bit. Okay, I'm going to start. It's going to take three minutes to draw this little robot, okay? And it's going to go over and it takes three minutes because I have chosen a very slow drawing speed. Now I do like to watch and make sure everything's working so I can see underneath there hopefully a little bit. No, I cannot see yet so I'm still not positive it's working. I'm pretty sure but I'm not 100% sure. So yep, now I can see it. So when this is done drawing the robot, I'm going to take the other color markers that I have and I'm going to fill in the design. But before I fill in the design, I want to take this off the mat and iron it really, really dry. If you take, um, there's a lot of different designs that you can have it draw one part of the boat and then another part of the boat. And, and it can go and it can color it and do different things and it'll actually tell you to change your markers for the different colors. This isn't one of those. This one is just a one color guy. That's why I'm gonna take it out and color it myself. But if the previous ink that was laid down is not completely dry, they can kind of bleed together. So if you're ever doing lab you know, layering designs, I guess I would call it, then be sure that you iron the fabric first so that the ink is completely dry. At some point, somebody out there is going to ask, is this permanent on fabric? Yes, this is permanent on fabric. 
We, can you take this through the wash? Yes, this can go through the wash. Nolan's only a six-year-old boy. I assume that it's going to have to be a washed quilt more times than not. And I expect that these markers are going to last that long or the design that I've created on here. Um, the other thing that you can do, especially with these markers, because there's so many fabu fabulous colors, keeping in mind there's a lot of fabric markers out there, and I love them all. Some are better than others. What I like about these ones in particular is they've, the felt tip marker on them, oops, there we go, is kind of hard. So when it comes for drawing on designs like this, it really works out very, very nicely, as opposed to maybe my Faber-Castell pit pens. I love Faber-Castell pit pens, but they've got a brush tip, so obviously I'm not going to be able to draw with them like this, and to the best of my knowledge, they wouldn't fit in the holder. So you see that my design is done. There's my little robot. I'm going to color him in, and I just want to show you how with the, like this one, I'd already done some pressing on this. I'm just going to be able to take and color in those just with the markers to give it a little bit more pizzazz. I'll probably do different colors on all of the different words, just so it'll be more interesting. All right, so do, 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 and then I get obsessed with my coloring, and then I don't want to stop. Okay, so there you have it. That is labeling. Oh, so let me show you. I'm going to take this off, even though it's not done. What I will do, let me move this out of the way. Whoops. Is I will trim this down into a triangle about that big. And then I'll show you how I'll put this on a quilt. Sorry, Athena. We're in very close quarters today. What I do is when I will take that triangle, uh, pretend it's all trimmed down, okay? Do, 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 do. Okay. I will baste that triangle in the corner before I put the binding on. So here is the stitching of my binding. I was label lazy and I did not put my, tri my label on before, but I should have. And I will stitch that on so then this, these two edges are really secure into the quilt. And then when the binding comes over on this, it covers that edge and it gets stitched down. So it's not just hand stitched down, but it's also machine stitched down, which means if somebody wanted to steal this quilt, they'd pretty much have to take the entire corner of the binding off again, which on most quilts is gonna make it not look so pretty. So if they steal the quilt and they wanna take the label off, good luck, it's gonna not be very pretty after that. And then all I have to do is hand stitch just this top edge. So then my label will be on that quilt and it'll be very secure. So there you go. There is making labels with the We Are Memory Keepers fabric quill and my scan and cut machine. If you have any questions, you can send me an email at quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. You can leave a comment below. I answer all of the questions just as quick as I possibly can. If you have any problems finding any of these um, tools and supplies, I have a very good friend who has a um, website called Fireside quilts and you can go to that website most of these tools she has but trust me if she doesn't have them yet she can have them you just need to let me know that she needs to have them because I know that she doesn't have the we are memory keeper stuff yet okay um, subscribe to the channel if you like this please give us a thumbs up if you uh, I guess that's it that's the end of our live on a Sunday afternoon have a great day